Hi and welcome to another video. In this video I want to take a look at um, queuing uh, MQTT messages for delivery uh, in Node-RED. Now a little while ago I did a tutorial on the site on my other site um, about message delivery and, and queuing messages and this is really for uh, edge node uh, edge network gateways and sending data off to the cloud. Uh, what happens if the internet connection goes down or the cloud goes down? Um, what do you do with the data? Well the answer is uh, you queue it. Now a lot of people think well if you set the quality of service to one or two that will work. Well it doesn't actually work, um, not completely, uh, because in node red the MQTT node will start to re reject the incoming messages so if I look at the node red flow and here we got uh, an MQTT out node now if the node loses connection with the broker then it will start rejecting incoming messages to the to the node so it won't actually queue them only messages that are already in the node and trying to be sent will will be queued with quality of service one or two any new incoming message will just simply be discarded so just relying on quality of service one or two is not sufficient we actually need to buffer the data what I've got is actually two functions that will buffer the data and I'll take you through the the difference in those functions uh, a little bit later now what I'm relying on in this uh, flow here is the status node. What I'm going to do is detect the status of the MQTT connection. Once the connection fails I'm going to start buffering data and if we look at it here you can see I'm monitoring the MQTT out node with the status node and when it fails I set the status. This is a flow variable MQTT status and if I look at these buffer nodes here you can see I'm using that status here to buffer the data so if the status fill is green which means the node is active so we're okay then I return the message so the message goes out off into the MQT node if not then I buffer it now because it's buffering in memory and, and you may have large buffers then you might want to limit the size of it. So I've just got a quick um, length check here and I'm limited to 20 entries in, in the buffer. And in this case here I, I drop the payload and I drop the topic into a, uh, an array and I store that array in a flow variable called buffer. Okay now this can be used for real-time data and I've got a little inject node here that simulates real-time data so if I I've got actually a I just injected it and you can see it here there's the real-time data now I'm just injecting it manually and there it is again now this will be coming obviously periodically and if the MQTT node fails, so if the uh, the connection is lost, um, which I can simulate quite easily by stopping the broker, which I have done now, and if I go across here, you should see my brokers trying to reconnect. And if I look at the flow variables, you can see the buffer is empty. And now I'm going to inject a few and if I look at the buffer object you can see it's storing the data okay so far so good so what happens when the connection comes back up we have to send out the data so if we go further down the flow here I've got a again a timer node now I've set this for every 15 minutes the reason is because I actually started I, I took this flow from a, another flow I'd written and basically this this flow was actually designed to send uh, files um, every evening so send a data file a CSV file every evening and if that failed then it would actually buffer it 
and it will try 15 minutes later and try it so I just left the timer as it was now you'd set this to whatever you want but I'm going to actually trigger it manually so if we look at it we've got a, a buffer there let me bring the broker back up and check that it's connected it's starting to connect now it's connected and if I send the stored data and refresh this here you can see the buffer is now empty now I just want to point out yes, I actually did make a mistake but it did work anyway um, that this send store data should be connected to the resend uh, buffer data one uh, function and the reason is is this function is slightly different from the other function because this basically goes through the buffer and it pops the the data out and it puts it into the payload so we're going we're storing the actual uh, payload and topic and so all we need to do is retrieve the payload and topic with it with this example the other example is slightly different so make sure that is connected to that when you're actually uh, using buffer one so when you're using this one here you need to use this one here now the other example I've got is is buffer 2. Now buffer 2 is slightly different because this um, flow was originally designed for sending files um, we could use buffer 1 for it and we could basically read the file in send it to buffer 1 and if it failed we'd store the entire file. Now they could be quite large and we're storing them in memory so rather than storing the file itself buffer 2 data will actually just store the file name so we're not going to store the contents of the entire file we're going to store the file name and then we're going to read that file name back here so let's just rewire that one so it's there now and we're going to use this one here now so if I just to show you the mosquito sub so we can see what's going on you can see here now I'm sending in a complete file so let's simulate a failure again and let's send the file a couple of times and if we look at the buffer you can see I've got two objects but notice now I haven't got the payloads being stored I've actually just got the name of the file being stored and the topic so I'm just storing pointers to the to the data now if I go down to resend buffer data 2 you can see here I loop through the buffer if it's greater than 0 and I extract the file name and I extract the topic then I s send it out so I'm sending the file name into here the file name goes into this delay node now it's useful to have a delay node because you might have, have queued lots of data so you don't want to actually send it all in one go and this basically reads the file and sends the file off to the MQTT node so let's restore it and let's send it and the buffer is now empty and if we look at here you can't really tell because there's two files gone there the same file okay so that's how to buffer buffer data you can buffer real-time data or you can buffer um, in my case the, the files so a lot of people um, store data locally on the network and periodically they send that data off via maybe a CSV file, maybe a JSON file, uh, maybe even a database. They send it off to a server on the uh, in the cloud and they do that periodically. Now this this flow here will do that and it will actually uh, buffer the data for you so if the connection does fail, something happens with, with the cloud uh, connection then the data isn't lost, it's stored and it will be sent later on. So 
the flow will be available for, for download uh, I'll make it available on uh, on both sites actually on the uh, my MQT site and on the node red site and I hope you like the video if you do then please click on the like button um, if you want to get notified of new videos then subscribe to the channel and if you've got any comments then please leave them below until next time goodbye